In this video, we're going to look at dilution problems. So a dilution is when you add volume to a solution to lower the concentration. And you may hear some terms like stock solution. So typically a stock solution would be the more concentrated solution. And then you might see terms like the diluted solution, which would be the solution that has less of the less of the lower concentration. So that just kind of gets you oriented toward what we're doing. So we have a solution, we add some water to it, we increase the volume and therefore lower the concentration. So let's look at this kind of more systematically and more quantitatively. So let's say that we had a graduated cylinder and inside this graduated cylinder, we have a volume and this volume is 0 0.500 liters. And so in our solution, we have a concentration where we have one mole that's divided, that's uh, dissolved into 0 0.500 liters. So our concentration in this flask is gonna be uh, two molar. So inside of here, we have a two molar solution which is uh, one mole dissolved into 0.5 liters. And then let's say that we add some water to this solution. And now, in the same exact graduated cylinder, forgive my drawing, I, I don't have the best drawing skills, we go uh, up to, we fill it up to the mark, and now we have a total of one liter. So if we redo our calculation for molarity, what's changing is the volume, right? So we're not changing the number of moles. I haven't added any more solute. So we have one mole of our solute in the first one, in the, in, the first, in the first picture here. Now, when I go to add the water, all I'm doing is raising the volume. I'm not changing the number of moles of solute. So I put the same moles of solute on top, but now I have one liter of solution on the bottom. So our molarity goes from two molar to one molar. That is what a dilution is. And the key to understanding a dilution is that the volume changes, but the moles remain constant. And since that's a constant, we can do something with our molarity calculation. So if we want to set this up, what we could do is we could say, well, this is really molarity one, and this is really molarity two. And if we want to create a relationship between molarity one and molarity two, we can work this out where we have the constant, the number of moles, as a link between the first condition and the second. So what I'm saying basically is we can take M1, which is equal to the moles divided by the volume, and that's the first volume, and we can have M2, and this is equal to the moles divided by the second volume. So if we reorganize this such that we get M1 times V1 is equal to the number of moles, and we get M2 times V2 is equal to the number of moles, and since the moles aren't changing, we could say that M1 V1 is equal to M2 V2. And this becomes our dilution equation. So the dilution equation works when you have, uh, when you add water. So whenever you add water to dilute something and the moles don't change, so you have no change in the number of moles, and you add water, this will work. I should say, we're t since we're talking about this in the context of aqueous solution, we're talking about water. But this can be generalized to any solution with any solvent. When you add the solvent, but you don't change the number of moles in the solution, this will work. So lecture problem three gives us some, example of some, gives us some examples of dilution calculations. So in this case, it says, how many mils of a 1.5 molar sulfuric acid solution are needed to prepare 100 mils of a 0.18 molar solution of H2SO4. What we're doing is, is we're taking a concentrated solution and we're preparing a secondary solution by adding some water to that concentrated solution to make a more dilute solution that has a total volume of 100 mils. So the way you can set this up is, and the way that I like to set this up is, we take the M1 and the V1 and we take the M2 and the V2 and we put our equal signs we write in what the values are. So for my first solution, it says how many mils, so I don't know how much volume of this solution I have, of a 1.5 molar solution, so I put the concentration on top, are needed to prepare, and now this is the second solution, so I have 100 mils of the second solution of 0 0.18 molar of the H2SO4 and the more diluted solution. So I basically pop my numbers into an M1 and a V1 and an M2 and a V2. This just helps me set things up. So once I have this set up, I can now go to my equation. And the nice thing about my equation is it doesn't matter what units of volume I have because 
since it's M1V1 equals M2V2, they're going to cancel out anyway. I can plug in units in milliliters or in liters. It doesn't make a difference. This is the only really time that you can do that because they're going to drop out as a ratio on both sides. If you feel more comfortable, you can convert these to liters and just be be using liters throughout the entire process. But you don't have to if you don't want to. So we can say that M1V1 is going to equal M2V2. That's our dilution equation. So we have 1.5 molar times V1 is going to equal uh, 0.18 molar times 100.0 mLs. And again, like I said, you can, you can convert that to liters if you want, and it'll still work. Everything will work. Um, it's just a matter of making sure that the units on the left and the units on the right match. So if we solve for V1 in this case, we're going to get a volume of 12 mils. So what this basically is saying is if we take a flask that's 100 mils, this is a 100 mil vol flask, what I'm doing is, is I'm basically putting in, if I put in 12 mils of 1.5 molar, and then I fill this flask to the mark, what I'm going to get in this flask is 0 0.18 molar. Okay, so let's take a look at the second one. So it says 80 mils of a 6 molar solution of NaOH is diluted by adding 880 mils. Calculate the molarity of the diluted solution. So let's start by writing our M1V1 and our M2V2. Now here's one where we have to be a little careful. This is a good example of where it's not as easy as it might seem all the time. So our first solution, we have 80 mils of it, and it's 6.0 molar. Now it says for the second solution, is it says it's diluted by adding 880 mils. So let's just think about this for a second. What we're doing is we're taking a flask and we put in 80 mils of our six molar solution. So we've got our 80 mils in. And then we put on top of that another 880 mils. So now we have our solution. So what we have to be careful of in this case is that the total volume at the end is not going to be 880 mils. It's going to be 880 mils plus the 80 mils. We have to be very careful about this. You have to read the problems carefully. So let's just distinguish this from the first problem. In the first problem, it says how many mils are needed to prepare exactly 100 mils of the solution. In this case, it says that 80 mils is combined with 880 mils. So those are two different circumstances and you got to be careful. So our final volume in this case is going to be a total of 960 mils. So now it wants to know what is the molarity of that solution. So we set up M1V1 is equal to M2V2. Again, you could convert these to liters if you want. Um, you don't have to if you don't want to. So we get 6.0 molar times 80 point mils is equal to M2, which we're going to solve times 960 mils. And so if you solve for M2, you get 0 0.50 molar.